Hey, what's up? This is MarketAlchemist.Camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today is the 20th and likely final episode of the Simple Phoenix Live View series. What we're going to do is go over how to change a show page for a podcast here from a traditional Phoenix view into a live view. And since we've already done that with the user pages, we're going to go a little bit faster this episode. So let's just do a quick walkthrough. Nothing needs to change in the podcast controller. That stays entirely the same. The template for the show page is barely changed. We change it from the EEX to an LEEX template. And we also need to pass the socket into our routes. Since these links to edit and back, uh, which you only see back since I'm not logged in as an admin. Since these links are traditional links, we don't need to change anything there like we did for users. Then, uh, except for making it socket, of course. Uh, and then inside of this page, we have a comment section, which is one template. And inside of that template, there's a form for adding a new comment. So here's our comments template. Um, again, we have to call or we have to pass a socket instead of a con since this is using a socket but that's really about all that needs to change inside the form for adding the template right here we have a little bit more to change so we can't use the normal form helpers so notice we've got uh, a normal HTML form closing this here and we just say form for pass the change set in and uh, give it an action of the same page with the hash. Then we need to pass uh, Phoenix change, validate, Phoenix, Phoenix submit, save, and the Phoenix hook for save form. Let's get a bit more space on the side here. Actually, even that's not enough. We'll just uh, set it to wrap. So we can see the text area is the one visible input in the form. The podcast ID is hidden, as is the user ID. Then we have the save button. Uh, in this text area, we're debouncing it on blur. So anytime we leave this area, we'll check to see if the comment is valid. It is valid. We don't really have any requirements except that it can't be blank. So if we type something in, that goes away, delete it, leave the uh, blur away from the input. Now it says can't be blank. Nothing really changed in the controller. so we can pretty much just go on to the live view we had to make. So this is, let me just open up the directory structure again. So you can see we have reactor web, controllers, then a live directory, podcast live show. So this is podcast live dot show. And our router is calling this directly. So if we go to the router, we'll see podcast ID, Podcast live show is a live route, and since that's ahead of the resources for podcasts, uh, we're not going to ever be able to get to the show action in our original podcast controller that we made with Phoenix generators. Back to our show page, we're rendering this show.html.lex template that we already looked at, and we have two versions of our mount function. Uh, this is basically to capture the current user if someone's logged in. So if there's a user ID, then we'll get the current user from that user ID, and we'll see if they're an admin or not using that current user that we just got. And uh, with that current user and an admin user, which is going to be, this is going to return a Boolean, so we'll, we'll have a current user with the entire user struct, and then um, either a true or false for admin user. We'll put that in a socket. If there is no user ID in the session, then uh, in the mount, we'll just assign nil to both current user and admin user. That way, these templates can react to whether or not someone's logged in. I'll just log out really quickly and go back, and we can see um, now the entire you know comment form is no longer there. We have a login message instead of link to the login page. So the handle params is dealing with which podcast page we're on. So it'll be 
this parameter in our route. And if it's connected to a socket, then we subscribe both to the podcast that we care about and to the comments. And I'll, I'll go over this once we uh, get to the next file, which will be the context. And we assign the ID into the socket and then call a fetch. Uh, fetch uses the ID to get the podcast out of the context, just like we would normally do from our controller. And change set, this is also the same logic. And if we're connected to a socket, then we subscribe to each comment that we've gotten. And this subscribe one function we'll go over in a minute, but basically the first argument it takes is the ID, and the second is the topic of the thing we're subscribing to. Because remember, now we have both comments and podcasts in the same content context. So we have to, we have, to have a separate way to subscribe to comments from podcasts. Uh, the handle info, this is basically the same logic we had before in users. Um, so we're basically anytime there's there's a podcast that's updated, we fetch the new information from the socket. Um, anytime a podcast is deleted, um, this is the same podcast we're looking at, then we'll just redirect the index. So say we're looking at podcast number two and an admin deletes that whole podcast then we'll just be automatically redirected back to the main index page. And then for comments, when a new comment is created, we'll fetch the information from the socket. Maybe that comment will be on this podcast page. Maybe it won't. If it is, we'll display it. Uh, when a comment we're subscribed to, which would only be the comments on this page, is updated, then we'll fetch the new information from the socket. The comment's deleted same kind of thing we just refetch the information so if a comment's deleted we don't get redirected back to the index page we'll just refetch and then it'll disappear from here we have a handler for an event called save that takes a comment and then we create a comment with it that event corresponds to what we had in our add comment form so when someone fills out that form we submit a save event as well as all of the comment information from the form. Here's where we process it, just like we normally would in a controller, uh, except of course we're using a socket instead of a con. Um, handling the validate event is the same basic thing. In our add comment form, we have uh, validation on Phoenix change. And so basically whenever this text area changes, we'll send the change set to the show and we'll get a change set out of our context. We'll put the action insert in it and see if there are any validation errors. And that is all of the logic in our podcast show. So it's very similar to our, our live view for user show, but a bit simpler actually. Let's have a look at the content context. It's going to be very similar to our accounts context logic, except that we need to handle two kinds of subscriptions. Um, so what I've done is I've added a default variable here. Let me just open up the accounts context for comparison. We can see here we've just got a subscribe, which subscribes to all users. And then we have a subscribe with a user ID that will just subscribe to that specific user ID. So it would be, you know, users one or users two, something like that. And the topic is just, or actually it would be accounts one, accounts two, because the topic is inspecting the module. For content, we have one topic for podcast. That's always going to be whatever the module string is. We have another one for comments. And notice we've aliased the string. So this is always going to be uh, the comment module string. Just to see that in action really quickly, we can pull open the terminal and paste that in and then inspect comment and you can see reactor.content.comment. It's literally just that string. In both the subscribe and the subscribe one functions here, you can see I've made a default parameter and that it will default to podcast. So if we don't say what we're subscribing to, we get the podcast. If we want to get the comment, we have to pass it comment. So back in our show page, we'll see comment 
dot subscribe comment. So this is subscribing to all of the comments. The subscribe one only has an ID, doesn't have a topic. So that's the same as if we had explicitly said, get the podcast of that ID. And just as before, at the bottom of our module, we've got our notify subscribers functions. Uh, I've again had to make a few changes to make this more general since we, we have different possible topics. But essentially, we've got the same default topic of podcast. When we call notify subscribers, we just do a Phoenix pub sub broadcast. Same logic we had before precisely, except that we have uh, a topic variable here instead of always using the same topic. And if there's an error, we just pass along the error and the reason exactly. And we have to call this notify subscribers in our context functions just like we did in accounts. So I'm just going to search for notify subscribers. We'll see we've got in our create podcast, we do the same, you know, repo.insert, then we notify subscribers. And looking at this, this definition here, notice that we have OK and result as the first argument and it returns OK and result. So this function is just to broadcast some information to what's going on in our channel as a side effect and it doesn't affect the pipeline that it's in. Uh, so we've got notify subscribers for creating a podcast. We've got notify subscribers for updating a podcast. And of course, these correspond exactly with the handlers in our, our uh, podcast show live view. We have notify subscribers for deleting a podcast. Then for comments, same thing, but now we're also passing along comment just so that uh, it uses a comment topic. And we've got update and delete in the comments as well. And that is the full extent of the changes in the code. And what we got out of that is, I just log in as admin now with my secure ASDF ASDF password. And notice now I can type a new comment and we get it instantly. We're on the same page. And if we had a second tab open and someone else was looking at the page, they would see the comment appear as it was typed. And the same should be true for an edited comment, although I haven't tried that out yet. So we'll just do that right now. Scroll down to look at the comments. I'll edit the comment in this tab. And let's just make this uh, a huge comment. And we'll do it like that. Actually, I think it's got to be at least an H3. Save it. And now it's a huge comment over here. Um, probably shouldn't even allow headers at all. So this is what our Phoenix Live View site looks like. If you've been following through this entire series, it's been a lot of upgrades, huh? Started at 0.4.1. I've had three separate upgrade episodes, and it's now at 0.12.1. I'm probably not going to be recording any more Live View episodes for a while. Definitely not another series for a while. Uh, but after it hits 1.0, we may come back and revisit it. Next up is going to be a premium series on Absinthe, GraphQL, and probably a bunch of just one-off episodes sprinkled through. So if you're interested in influencing what I work on next, go to alchemist.camp slash requests. The longer you've been a member, the more votes you'll have to vote on what I work on next. Uh, this one is definitely happening. I selected it a while ago. Looks like the next thing uh, other than that is going to be either a step-by-step -step series on Ecto or a JSON API project. So go to the request page and cast your votes, and I will see you next time.